Welcome everybody. Let's do a video now <coughs> where we demonstrate using uh, a script for R <coughs> that will simulate uh, running several craps games. So let's take a look at the commands in that particular script. So the first command um, that we have here, so the pound sign gives us a comment, so the comment tells you what the following command does. So this command will clear all the variables in a workspace. Well, what that does, why we might want to do that, is that any var variable that might show up later on in our code, if it's not already initialized, it may already take the value that happened to show up from that workspace. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen, so we make sure our entire workspace is cleared out for any variables that we define. And so that's the purpose of this first command. Second command allocates, um, just tells R that we are going to have a variable called games. Now we don't know anything about that yet. That will end up being our vector of outcomes from our game, whether we win or whether we lose. <coughs> our next command tells uh, R the number of times that we want to simulate our game. So in this case we're going to simulate um, 10,000 craps games. Now let's get into the loop itself. So this outside for loop is there to tell R the, the tell us to loop through the number of games. So t is going to be our time variable and it's going to loop through games from 1 up to a value of n. Now inside this loop we have our game itself. And so the first command, what happens during a craps game, the first command or the first thing that you have to do is to roll a come out roll. And that's what this command does. Now what the game, what the what the function sample does, if we give um, the first argument for this function is the sample space that we are sampling from. So we're going to sample from the values one through six, so possible number of spots on a die, and we want to take one sample from there. And because we didn't feed a probability distribution to the function sample it's just going to take a uniform probability distribution um, on that sample space. So we get a probability of 1 over 6 for any of those values. So the first sample gives us the value from the first die that we roll. The second sample gives us a value for the second die that we roll. And we take those two values, we add them together, that number of spots is the value that we have for the come out roll. The next three commands gives us a condition of um, either winning on the come out roll, losing on the come out roll, or going from the come out roll into the point phase of the game. So the first condition, um, test whether a player craps out or not on the come out roll. So what does it take for a player to crap out? He has to take on a value of either 2, 3, or 12, and that will mean that the player craps out on the come out roll. Um, so if that happens, the player loses. Um, else, if the player rolls either a 7 or an 11, then the player automatically wins on the come out roll. And so that result gives us a true value. The result, so the, the value of result tells us whether we win the game or we lose the game. So true if we win the game, false if we lose the game. So if we crap out, we lose. If we roll a 7 or 11, we win. Else, what can happen? So if we don't crap out, we don't automatically win. Now we enter the point phase of the game. So that's what this condition is for. So what happens in the point phase? Um, our, we roll again, and that will determine, so do we either um, roll the point again, or do we roll a 7? So we roll a sample, we use the sample function one more time to roll the value for one die. We add the value for we get from the second die, and that's our roll value. 
Now the condition is we keep rolling. So we just keep rolling until we either hit a 7 or we come back and hit the come out roll. Uh, we hit the come out value. And so that's what this condition is here to tell you. So we roll if roll is a member of the set of 7 or the come out value this exclamation point out in front tells us that whatever condition that we get inside this inner set of parentheses is false. So as long as we are not a 7 and not the come out value, we keep rolling. Okay, so we break out of the loop once we roll a 7 or we roll the come out value. And then this last condition, this if else, um, if we win, uh, so if we roll a 7, um, then we lose, else we win the game. Okay, And now what this particular program does is then take that result and it will add it on into the vector games so that the teeth value in that vector is whether we win or lose on the teeth game that we're running. And so that ends the loop. Um, and so let's just run the run the script and see what happens and let's see what the results look like. All right, so let's pull up. So let's open a new terminal and now let's start R. So R the program gets started. Now, how we run a script in R is to use the command source. Okay, so we want to source, and the value of our file was craps. So we type the name of the file that we want to run. We source, we hit return, and R simulates the program, and simulates successfully. We didn't get any errors. Um, we get back to the next prompt, so everything ran well. If we look at the workspace, so if we look at the values in the workspace, sure enough, we have our vectors of the come out value, our vector of games that we win, whether we won or lost how many games, n being the number of games that we run, um, result being whether we won or lost a particular game, what was our role, and t was the, the variable that we used to count our number of games. And so if we look at the vector games itself, so if I look at games, I get a huge vector, um, 10,000 long. So here's 9,997, 9,998, 99, 10,000. So we get a vector that's 10,000 long of either true or false values. So now we want to know um, what is the probability that we won, that we will win a game of craps. Well, the nice part about a, a true-false vector, a Boolean vector, is that R will treat true as being a value of 1 and false as being a value of 0. So if we just sum all of the values in the vector games, we get 4,912. So out of 10,000 games of craps, we won this one 4,912 times. So what's our probability of winning? Well, n was the number of games that we won. So our probability of winning sum of games divided by n. So our probability of winning 0 0.4912. Now we can we are free to run this script as often as we want and so if we do that let's run the script again see what happens on the next batch of results. So if we source our craps it runs again ran successfully and if we sum games over n we get a probability of winning of 0 0.4902 this time 
And so if we run our simulation for a third time, we get a probability of winning of 0 0.49328. Now if you've watched a previous video on the theoretical calculation with craps, you know that the actual probability of winning is going to be 0 0.49292929299 and so repeating. And so our actual probability um, is going to be, that's our actual probability, so the values that we're getting are pretty close to that theoretical probability. So I hope going through this you kind of, it's been a good example of running a simulation in R um, for something that we've done and kind of an example of, of the difference between the theoretical probabilities that we get and the probabilities that we get when running simulations. So if you want to take a look at this code, it'll be on the class website. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you later.